Okay, so uh, let's let's draw our picture. So the, the domain here is now this is the problem in three space, and C is the part of the unit circle in the y z plane. So let's draw the unit circle in the y z plane. Y z and the unit circle in the y z plane goes around like this. Cool. And let's see, I want the first quadrant portion of the unit circle in the YZ plane. Okay, so I want that bit of that unit circle oriented counterclockwise as seen from the positive portion of the X axis. Right? So as seen from over here, I want this to look counterclockwise, and that means like that. Cool? Okay. Okay. Good deal. And it says use the fundamental theorem of line integrals to compute a line integral. Okay, well, that seems like a reasonable choice. Let's um, uh, compute a line integral uh, around that curve f dot dx. Um, specifically, the, the vector field is the gradient of a function at little f. Well, that's fantastic news because now I can actually use the fundamental theorem of line integrals to rewrite this as f of the endpoint B uh, minus F of the starting point A. And this, the F here is that function whose gradient is the field that I was actually interested in. So now, so here's our starting point A. I know that's the starting point because of the orientation. Okay? And this is the ending point B. Uh, now, a little bit of geometry, and I can see, you know, this is a unit circle in the YZ planes. So that means that that's the point uh, 0, 1, 0. This is the point um, 0, 0, 1, right? So I just have f of 0, 0, 1 minus f of 0, 1, 0. And then this function f is given, which is super, x squared y minus e to the z. Oh, that's what I was confused. Okay. I oh, thought, yeah. I thought I had to Find the no. I was to, that was, that was a point of like asking these questions. Oh, I see. I see. So I was like, okay, it's a, it's a, like a read function. So I was like, okay. Yeah, no, this, this, sometimes problems are easy. Yeah, and so you, you're right. You, you, you know, every example that we, well, yeah, every example that we did in the section, you had to do some work to find the anti-gradient. Here, I didn't tell you the vector field seems hard, but I told you the anti-gradient straight out. Right, and and sometimes I'll do that. Uh, in fact, uh, later on, there so there are some problems in the Gauss section and the Stokes's curl theorem section where I don't tell you the integrand, but I tell you the anti whatever the anti um, divergence or the anti curl or, or or what have you. And so yeah, sometimes problems that look harder are actually easier. Yeah. So this function was given, and let's see, it says right here. That guy right there, right. So uh, all right, so let's let's evaluate. Well, at this point, x squared y minus e to the z is uh, hmm, minus uh, so it's negative e, and at this point f is let's see x squared y is going to be zero, and then minus e to the zero uh, makes negative one. So I have minus what is actually negative one. That means plus one. So there you go. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good deal. So just a quick question. So yeah. Like, sure. In your book, yeah. That last example you showed how to calculate an anti-gradient. Can you just use it as a general strategy? Like, if the terms don't match it, then you definitely don't have an anti-gradient, right? So you can't. Yeah. No. That's that's right. I mean, if if those terms don't match up, then there is not going to be an anti-gradient. Right. I'm just, I'm just kind of confused on like how you determine that. Like, I was looking through the video last night, trying to look through the example, and figure out what you would do with those constant functions. So, like, yeah. Let, let me stop this recording. Oh, and then I'll, I'll, no, no, that's all right.